Hey guys, Eamon here, back with another AFL video. Uh, this is our third video, I think. Uh, the first two we did were just like, I guess like the rules and kind of just a little intro to AFL. But um, yeah, or to Aussie Rules Football. Um, but yeah, so this video I wanted to do a little bit of a, another like a history type thing instead of just like a explanation, I guess. So this is the, the entire history of the AFL. Uh, 15 minutes long. I'm not sure if this is the right video. There's there's a few different ones. If there's a better one, let me know. I'll check it out in the future. Um, but yeah, this looks good and it should give me a good uh, good background on like the league and the sport, I guess. Um, yeah, but yeah. So uh, yeah, after after we do this one, we'll, pro we'll probably start doing some highlight type stuff. I got so many like requests and all that stuff for uh, like best marks, best uh, best games. Just yeah various players all that so that, that's good um yeah we'll start doing some of those i'm trying to try to do um if you've been following f from like a rugby or league that i've been doing on the channel you know I've, I've said a bunch of times i'm trying to make like a schedule of like days certain days where i'll upload stuff and or specific specific uh, stuff uh so yeah, i'm gonna try to get that set up i'm aiming to get at like at least two afl videos out per week um but yeah, we'll see. At, at least one, hopefully, hopefully two, and then I do want to check out. Um, I know it's. I think it's in the middle of the season, right, for the AFL. Um, I do want to start checking out like some uh, like live matches, um, and do like a live stream for for that, where I'm where we all get in get in the chat and just like talk about the game while it's going on. Because I know what, I've been doing that for the NRL uh, once a week, and it's been yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun watching the full game, and you guys are there to help me. Uh, if I have questions and stuff, I get like live answers to it and all that. So that's, that's always good. So yeah, I'll try to, I'm trying to try to do that. Um, maybe next week, if not, maybe two weeks from now, we'll start, we'll start getting those set up. Um, cause yeah, like I said, I'm trying to get on a schedule where, um, well, yeah, get, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you're enjoying the videos, make sure to drop a sub, drop a like comment, uh, something you should check out. Um, I'm probably just going to stick with, uh, AFL rugby and league for now because I, it's a bit of a um my brain can only hold so much info at once it, it's kind of hard to to deep dive any other sports but i know there has been some requests for like uh for some other stuff but yeah we'll probably we'll probably push push those off for now and just uh just grind these three out um but yeah anyways let's hop into it all right the entire history of the afl this is by colleen it's from from October it came out. Um, yeah, make sure to drop, drop this guy a sub, or this, is it a guy? I don't know if it's a guy. Uh, just drop me through drop them a sub, uh, like the video if you enjoy it, and yeah, let's just hop into it. Or attract 300,000 fans a week, garner millions of TV viewers, <laughs> and become the national sport of a country, all in the span of just 160 years. This is the entire history of the AFL. Nice. The stadium's so cool. Victorian cricket it. captain Tom Wills invented Australian mm -hmm. rules football in 1858 as a way for cricketers to keep fit during the winter. How did Wills come up with the idea? Mm -hmm. He took inspiration from the indigenous sport of Marngrook, where teams kick and mark a circular ball made from possum skin and filled with charcoal. The aim of Marngrook okay. was to simply display better skills than your opposition, done through outstanding kicking or high leaping marks. The game had no scoring system, and the matches began with the best player on the field simply starting with the ball. Wills held the first official game of Australian rules football that same year. <laughs> it was played between Victorian schools Scotch College and Melbourne Grammar on the parklands just outside the MCG. The match was first team to kick two goals wins, but <laughs> after three consecutive Saturdays of play, neither team had achieved this feat, and the scoreline was stuck at one goal apiece probably had something to do with the ground being four times the size of the MCG. Interestingly <laughs> enough, both teams were allowed to choose their own umpires for the match. If only the Crows had that choice. 1858 saw the creation of Aussie Rules' oldest team, the Melbourne Football Club. Okay. Melbourne played their first match against the South Yarra Football Club in late September and were able to secure the win. For this game, both teams played with 26 men aside. The Geelong Football Club followed Melbourne's footsteps in 1859, yeah, becoming so just the second Aussie teams, rules yeah. team in the sport's so far short history. 1859 was also the same year that Tom Wills created the first 10 rules of Aussie rules. Many of these rules are still used to this day, including the coin toss, distance between goalposts, marking, 
out of bounds okay. and handball rules. Straight after these rule changes, Ooh, Aussie rules this? games became a regular occurrence at a huge. Where is this? What's what city is this? I, I I don't I don't really know too much about like the geography in Australia and like the the only thing I really can like can like point out is like I think Bondi Beach and there's like a TV show called that and then I know there's is it like an opera thing or something with the uh, the big like white uh, building on the coast somewhere uh, I think it's in Sydney yeah I think it's in Sydney but yeah let me this looks this looks like so nice that'd be an awesome like bike ride right there holy number of parks all across Melbourne. Oh, it's Melbourne. The next okay. year, in 1860, politician John Brodie Spence formed the Adelaide Football Club, the first South Australian Aussie rules team in history. It's important to note that this is not the same Adelaide team that roams the AFL today. By 1864, okay. Carlton had been established, quickly followed by the formation of Queensland's first Aussie rules team, the Brisbane Football Club, in 1866. Then came the arrival of many other new teams across the country, including North Melbourne in 1869, <laughs> Port Adelaide in 1870, Ooh, cool Essendon in 1872, St Kilda in 1873, Jeez, so and old. South Melbourne, the current Sydney Swans, in 1874. The newfound sport of Aussie rules was starting to spread all throughout Australia, gaining nationwide recognition in the process. New Zealand became just the second country to adopt Aussie rules in 1868, and it saw great success among the Kiwis. <laughs> this has expanded to the point where nowadays, five of New Zealand's 16 regions have their own organised competitions. New Zealand was even the AFL's okay. country of choice for the first match outside of Australia in 2013, mm. yeah, which saw Sydney beat St Kilda by 16 points at Wellington Stadium. By the 1870s, yes. games were being hosted at the MCG, regularly attracting crowds of 10,000 people eager to witness this new and unique sport. The SANFL was created in 1877 and is currently the oldest state league competition in Australia. But wouldn't the oldest league be the VFL? Well, no, the VFL was surprisingly created a week later, <laughs> kind of. You see, these leagues weren't called the VFL and SANFL. They were called the VFA and the SAFA, the Victorian Football Association and South Australian Football Association, respectively. The first interstate match between Victoria and South Australia was played in 1879, where Victoria destroyed SA 56 to 3. Jeez. The 10,000 strong crowd showed the popularity of the concept, which paved way for the future State of Origins and EJ Witten Legends matches. South yes. Tasmania and yeah, Queensland soon opened for, their own for leagues AFL that well. same year, cool. and New South Wales followed soon right, in yeah, 1881, that's what I was about that before there. Western Australia did so as well in 1885. Mm -hmm. In 1888, Championship of Australia was launched, a football tournament between all clubs from the Victorian, South Australian, Western Australian and Tasmanian football leagues. Mm -hmm. The first year of competition saw Norwood and South Melbourne face off in three consecutive matches at Kensington Oval in South Australia, with Norwood winning every game and claiming the championship. From that point on, the winner was decided by a singular grand final instead. The tournament eventually ended in 1975, with Port Adelaide winning the most titles, accumulating four across the 19 total seasons. Okay. The VFL was formed in 1896, with eight clubs to its name, all the current Victorian teams except for Hawthorne, North Melbourne, Richmond and the Western Bulldogs. Team sizes reduced from 20 per side to 18, while most players were now getting paid, thanks to the Australian economy seeing high growth. The first VFL game commenced in 1897 at the Fitzroy Cricket Ground. In this game, Fitzroy defeated Carlton 49-16. 1908 saw clubs Richmond and University accepted into the VFL after a vote between the eight founding clubs agreed to their inclusion. This was the same year that the first national carnival was held in Melbourne, an interstate competition between nearly every mm. state with the addition of New Zealand. Yeah. Melbourne. So in these, this looks so cool. Where is this now? Is this no? And I gotta do like a geography video on Australia or something, or like a city deep dive. This looks so cool. Yeah, it looks. It looks like. You know, it almost looks like they're like on the water. Between nearly every state, with the addition of New Zealand. 
These carnivals continued until 1977, when they would transform into the State of Origin competition. Okay, yeah. In 1915, the first recorded women's football match was held in Western Australia to fundraise money for the construction of the Arch of Victory, a structure to commemorate the 60,000 soldiers killed in the gunfire of World War I. Yeah. All major football leagues were suspended for their 1916 bell. Why exactly? Well, there was a little war going on at the time called World War I. Now, the VFL did continue, but with only four of its eight teams, making mm. Fitzroy's 1916 premiership not as fulfilling for the club as it should have been. The Brownlow medal was introduced in 1924 as a way to recognise the best and fairest okay. player in the VFL for a particular season. The medal was named after the former Geelong player and VFL president, Charles Brownlow, to honour the tremendous respect he earned from the entire football mustache. community throughout his prestigious career. 1925 was the year that Footscray, Hawthorne and Footscray North Melbourne joined the VFL. Name. So at this point, the VFL had a total of 12 teams. The 1929 okay. season was record-breaking, with Gordon Coventry becoming the first player in the VFL, WAFL Ooh, or that SNFL that would, that to kick 100 cool. goals in a season surpassing it with an impressive 124 goals. Jeez. SNFL player Ken Farmer would score 100 goals in the 1930 season, one year later, and continue the feat for an astounding 10 seasons in a row afterwards. Jeez. Coventry had opened the goal-scoring floodgates wide open. While the VFL continued throughout okay. all of World War II, the same cannot be said for the SNFL, which was suspended for three years, from 1942 to 1945. Okay. However, the VFL did lose Geelong, who withdrew from the competition for two years, rejoining in 1944. By 1945, the SNFL competition had resumed. The first official All-Australian team was selected in 1953 and based on players' performances at the Australian Football Carnival of that year, not their performance throughout the season, <laughs> as it's based on today. In that 1953 side was John Coleman, oh, someone we'll be talking about in just a moment. 1958 was a historic year for the game of Australian rules football, as it celebrated the 100th year of the sport's history. Mm -hmm, okay. A plaque was created to celebrate the milestone, and it remains at the MCG to this day. The 1970 grand final between Collingwood and Carlton amassed an enormous crowd of 121,000 people, 121, making it the largest attendance geez. for an Australian rules football game in history up until that point. It's crazy that like record footage still hasn't been That's broken like to this day. Carlton won the grand final by 10 points. Before 1976, each football game only had one field umpire, but 1976 saw the introduction of a <laughs> two umpire system which obviously helped increase the accuracy of officiating decisions. Eventually, this was increased to three umpires in 1994. Yeah, similar to and hockey. In further increased. Yeah, in hockey, there used to be. I think it was just was it just one ref? It was one run, one ref and one linesman, I think. And then they added a linesman and they added a ref. Now there's two refs and two linesmen. Four umpires, but that obviously yeah, hasn't helped four. the high number of poor umpiring decisions <laughs> continue to be made. Hotel manager mm -hmm. Leon Larkin founded State of Origin in 1977, okay. with players split into teams based on the state they played most of their junior footy in. Yeah. Sadly, the tournament only lasted 20 years, with the last match yeah. between Victoria and only South Australia years, in okay. 1999. Is this is this where the NRL got their, the idea from for the State of Origin, or was the NRL did the NRL already have this at the same time? Let me know. However, a tribute match was played in 2008 between the Dream Team and Victoria to <laughs> celebrate the 150th anniversary of Australian rules football. Okay. John Coleman kicked 12 goals on debut in 1949, 120 goals in just his second season the next year, and won premierships in both of these okay. years. So it's the man could have won guy. three premierships in a row had he not been controversially suspended for oh. the 1951 Grand Final. And so it seems fitting that in 1981, 19. That feel like that shouldn't be controversial. Three premierships in a row. That was that him that punched him? Like. Yeah, I mean that deserves a suspension, I think. But let me know if that's not what he was suspended for. Suspended for the 1951 Grand Final. And so it seems fitting that in that's 1981, the Coleman Medal was created, given okay. to the player who kicks the most goals in the home and away season. 
This ensures Coleman's legacy will never okay. be forgotten. Oh, I'm so dumb. Coleman's, Coleman's the older guy from before they had television, pretty much. Right? Am I reading that right? Yeah. Yeah, Coleman's like the OG, like, greatest player. Okay, sorry, I thought that my brain just had a... a, a uh, my brain just broke there for a second. Okay, so Coleman's like the... Yeah, he's like the one that was scoring a ton of goals way back and kind of revolutionized, like, the sport, I guess, and, and how, how much offense you can create in a game. So that's as a medal for that now. Created, given to the player who kicks the most goals in the home and away season. This ensures Coleman's legacy will never be forgotten. Yeah. 1981 yes. was the same year that the first VFL national draft was held, and it used. Pretty much the exact same drafting system that we use today. The team that finished last in the 1981 season got the first pick. Okay, second so to last got the okay, second interesting. Pick, and so on. 19 yeah, so there's a draft and or no, you not be in the AFL now. They might have changed that, but yeah, that's cool. They, I know it's like in the NRL, it's not like that. It's more like, uh, well, I guess yeah, North American sports have drafts usually, and then the rest of the world doesn't seem to do a draft. But I guess the AFL was doing a draft, or it might still be. 1982 was the same year that South Melbourne relocated to Sydney and thus the Sydney Swans were born. But it would be 23 long years until the club would break a record 72 year premiership drought. Jeez. The Brisbane Bears and West Coast Eagles were both formed in 1986 and joined the VFL for the 1987 season. The VFL changed its name to the AFL okay, in 1990, right. okay, okay. preparing for a huge influx of interstate teams set to soon yeah. enter the league. These included cool. Adelaide in 1991, cool Fremantle in 1995, and Port and Brisbane in 1997. Oh, dude, I love all the logos. West Coast 1992 so cool. grand final win over Geelong by 28 points made them the first club outside of Victoria to win a premiership. The VFL okay. was truly starting to become the AFL. Western Australia quickly saw more representation with Fremantle joining the AFL in 1995. In 1996, the Brisbane Bears and Fitzroy Lions officially merged to create the Brisbane Lions. Teams outside of Victoria began to see tremendous amounts of success at the AFL level. Adelaide became the first South Australian club to win a premiership with a 31 point win over North Melbourne in the 1997 Grand Final. Brisbane quickly followed suit with their 26 point win over Essendon securing them the 2001 premiership, making them the first Queensland based club to do so. Finally, Sydney's 4.2005 grand final win over West Coast, thanks to Leo Barry, marked the first premiership for a New South Wales AFL team. The Gold Coast Suns were established in 2009, playing their first ever game against Carlton Ooh. in round two of the 2011 season, where they were thumped by 119 points. Oh, Although Gold Coast received the wooden spoon that year, only oh, yeah. winning three wooden games spoon, the entire okay, season, the AFL well. thought, Hey, why not bring a second new team into the league? <laughs> and so the GWS Giants were born, kind of. The club was officially formed in 2009, but they were forced to wait three years for a league debut, oh, which geez, eventually okay. came in round one of the 2012 season in a game against the Swans. They were destroyed by 63 points. <laughs> the AFL introduced the AFLW in September 2016. Is this the first game oh, commenced in yeah. February the next year, where Carlton demolished Collingwood by 35 points, mm -hmm. a huge margin. Hey, in my last video we did, you guys were saying that the, the, the women's league isn't too competitive, like there's there's a, not enough talent in the league, is what I saw commented a lot. Like there's too many teams maybe, so the teams are a bit spread thin talent-wise, and there's, there's some players that are way better than other players, so it doesn't make it, it's not like that competitive type thing but let me know let me know we'll definitely gonna check out some women's stuff um at some point yeah the aflw standards half of the eight teams in that first round couldn't score more than two goals oh, while the free that games brutal, only attracted okay. twenty four thousand people signs that the aflw had a it's, lot it's funny hearing like only twenty four thousand people <laughs> i don't like like women's hockey struggles to get like five thousand and they got me you know, it was like twenty four thousand going to a woman's game in a, in a smaller country. It's crazy. To overcome, both skill Ooh. and crowd-wise. Ooh, that person's the knocked AFLW out. The AFLW expanded to 10 teams in 2019, with the addition of Geelong and North Melbourne. 
<laughs> the next year saw more teams join the competition in Gold Coast, Richmond, St Kilda and the West Coast Eagles. By 2023, every single AFL club had their own AFLW team. Okay, that's the good. The 2017 match between Gold Coast and Port at Jiang Wan Stadium in Shanghai, China was Gillen McLaughlin's Ooh. plan to lead the AFL's mark on the international stage. Okay. And it expand. turned out okay. Yeah. A crowd of 10,000 people was amazing yeah. for the first game yeah, in a 10, new country. I guess is but Port's 72 point thumping of Gold Coast definitely bored Jeez. the crowd. Yeah, However, I'm sure <laughs> Justin Westhoff's free goal out of midair surely won back Ooh, a few fans. What an angle. The 2020 crazy. season saw the AFL change for the worst thanks okay. to the pandemic. Yeah, the the pandemic. repercussions were that quarters were shortened to 16 minutes. The season was shut down for months on end, teams were forced to isolate, Weird. and the grand final was played at the Gabba in Brisbane. Not to mention it was a night grand final. New rules were introduced for the 20... What's the issue with it being a night game? Is that... Yeah, let me know why that matters if it was a night game. I feel like a night game in Australia might be better with, the, with how hot it might be. The 2021 but... AFL season that completely changed how the game was played. Oh, okay. The stand rule was the most influential of these, penalising defenders who moved while on the mark. This has led to so many 50 metre penalties in recent years that it's not even okay. funny, and it's an issue that the AFL needs to address immediately. And that's the entire 160 year okay, history of the AFL. The last, someone explained to me that minutes. last point they just made there. Alright. Yeah, good video. Make sure to sub to this guy. Actually, do you have any other videos that we could watch actually in the future? Let me see. Yeah, it looks like he has a bunch of good videos. Okay. Yeah, let me know if, the, if this guy has a good channel to check out. We'll, uh, <laughs> I make the greatest AFL videos on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, this this guy looks like he has tons of videos that we can check out. So let me know if there's any you see here that might be uh, good to do. All right. So that was the history of the AFL by Colleen. Yeah, Colleen. Yeah. Ton of info there. Um, yeah, it's crazy how, like, old, like, professional AFL is or perfect professional uh, Aussie rules is um yeah some of the teams are just like insanely old like in hockey like there's a, there's like the original six which are the first six NHL teams and those are only like 1920s or so so it's crazy to see teams that are like eight, 18 was it 8, 1858 is that what it said the first uh yeah 1858 I believe is what it said yeah so that yeah it's crazy there's teams that are just like so, so old and yeah, so I mean, I'm really excited to check out some actual like games and some like highlights and stuff because we haven't really done that. The only, the only stuff I've seen so far is just from these rules and explanation and history videos. So yeah, I'll definitely hop into that next. Um, we'll, we'll probably do something generic like the top like hundred plays or something for our next AFL video. Um, and then we'll yeah, and then we'll start hopping into players and all that all that good stuff. Um, but yeah. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a sub, drop a like, comment uh, what I missed. Any, any questions I had throughout, please, please comment. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.